What do you think about when you hear the word ball? Maybe a picture of a ball? Or the feeling of a ball in your hand? And what do you think your dog thinks about when he hears the words get your ball? Maybe a picture of a ball? Or the smell of a ball? How can we know what goes on in their mind? We know that some dogs can identify different objects by their names. For example, Rico, a Border Collie tested by Kaminsky and colleagues in 2004, was able to identify 200 objects. But what was he thinking about when he heard the toys' names? Did he think about their smell, their shape, or perhaps the way they felt in his mouth? A study on explosive detection dogs by Gazit and Turkle, published in 2003, found these dogs used olfaction regardless of elimination conditions, suggesting olfactory to be the preferred modality employed in search tasks. However, these dogs were specifically trained to use their nose. But what would other dogs do? Studies conducted on family dogs describe how dogs use a variety of different strategies. For example, Polgar and colleagues in 2015 described how dogs searching for their owners relied first on visual cues and then switched to olfaction when they were in close proximity to their owners. We wanted to know if in the process of learning the toy names, dogs form a multimodal mental representation of the objects. We hypothesized that if this is the case, dogs will recognize the objects also under limited sensory input, meaning that they will identify their toys even in the dark. For this we tested three female border collies, Whiskey, Nalani and Gaia, that all knew the names of over 20 toys. We started by confirming that all our dogs indeed knew the names of their toys when the toys were placed out of the owner's view. We then tested each dog under dark and light conditions. In both conditions, 20 of the dog's toys were randomly chosen and placed on the floor. The owner asked the dog to retrieve one of the toys. If the dog made a correct choice, it was rewarded with play and food. After every five trials, the experimenter took five toys back to the testing room. In this way, the number of toys from which the dog could choose was always between 20 to 16, meaning that the highest probability of a dog to pick up the correct toy just by chance was 1 out of 16. How dark was it? Pretty dark. During the test, we counted the number of correct and incorrect choices the dogs made in each condition. After the test, two independent coders analyzed the videos. The coders score specific behavioral patterns. For example, as an indicator for the dogs using vision, we look for the number of straight approaches, which are the number of times in which the dog approached the toy in a direct trajectory. We also measure the duration and frequency of the for that every time we heard the dog inhaling through its nostrils and the amount of time it took the dogs to choose a toy. A binomial test determined that in both conditions all dogs successfully retrieved the correct toy in a significantly higher than chance ratio. For two of the dogs, a pair t-test found that there was also a significant difference in the number of straight approaches. In the light condition, Whiskey approached the request toy three times in a direct trajectory, and Nalani did so two times, while in the dark condition we did not record any straight approaches. All dogs had a significant higher frequency of sniffing in the dark condition. The dogs also spent significantly more time sniffing in the dark. In addition, pair t-tests indicated a significantly longer duration of searching in the dark. The number of straight approaches and the decreased frequency and duration of sniffing suggest that in the light condition, dogs mostly used sight. But when sight wasn't an option, they used other senses, implying that they formed a multimodal mental representation of the objects. Oh, my God.